Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. So today we've got another diorama idea for you. This is less of a complete build and more of a kind of um, a kind of kit that you can kind of uh, put together. A lot of it is really cheap and simple, uh, easy to pick up. Some of it is, um, you know, it's been made by myself and can be made very easily. Some of it is just stuff that is you know, uh, actually purposed for other things, but has been repurposed uh, and can be repurposed for diorama builds or displays. Um, so we're going to jump into it. This is basically your forest planet kind of set. Um, we've got, you know, um, DIY trees, kind of uh, foliage, all that sort of thing. So I'm going to sort of go step by step and sort of talk about uh, my ideas for these sort of things and what you can do with them. So first of all, um, what we'll do is we'll start with some of the stuff in the front so this is uh, kind of packing that you get with kind of like hampers or anything like that kind of like Christmas time normally um, but also it's used as packing in you know uh, um, kind of fancy gifts that you know it might be a glass jar or something instead of tissue paper and just a cardboard box they might send it with some of this kind of it looks like nesting material or hay and what I found was um, this can be really useful for kind of like either desert planets to kind of make that kind of like tumbleweed look or if you're having you know a dirt or sort of uh, forest kind of um, terrain you can sort of throw this here you know here there and everywhere to sort of make the terrain a little bit more diverse rather than just grass or just dirt um, it kind of shows you that um, you know this is a, a natural place so we've got that that's nice and easy because you can just you know pick that up for free um, then we've got these pieces that um, I kind of got inspired to do seeing some other people uh, on Instagram who that you know that I follow who do toy photography and kind of do these DIY projects themselves as well basically what this is is if you've ever seen kind of like you know if you can picture World War One and the bunkers and kind of like the trenches the trenches have these reinforced walls that are just kind of wood panelling that, that's kind of planked together and basically I've seen some people who have made kind of like the Mimban um, you know Stormtrooper or like kind of Mud Trooper scenes um, and they've uh, just basically used hot glue and uh, little wooden popsicle sticks to create these kind of like trench walls and obviously like they're really you know easy to do and you can like I say pair them up um, and if you're outside and you dig a nice trench into the dirt and you you know kind of wedge these in there this can be nice walling and again because it's these nice simple shapes you can kind of do you know diagonal uh, move like kind of moves in the dirt for your trench or just straight and obviously instead of doing one big thing if you just make lots of these that are singles you can arrange them in any way you like um, you can even use them as kind of like floor paneling or if you're trying to you know kind of recreate a dock or something like that uh, maybe the um, you know maybe the scene from Mando when he uh, he uh, drops the <laughs> drops the razor crest into the water that kind of place you know you can use it for the docking but again like I say this is more so the idea for this is kind of like a, a dirt kind of planet where you're making the trench walls so that's nice and simple again cheap and easy all you need is a little bit of hot glue and some popsicle sticks um, and if you do it to a certain scale obviously just you know pick how many wooden um, kind of like wooden slats you want to do uh, and then do two um, on the side so that you've got um, you've got your wall like this of all the different slats. You've got two on the side uh, to kind of frame them and reinforce them. And then on the back, just diagonals to help reinforce them as well because then you can kind of move it around, flex it, and it's not going to just snap off. Um, so that's nice and easy. Then what we've got here, um, again, you can find this kind of in the forest, in the woods. Um, I got this at a garden centre, um, kind of Christmas time. It was a sort of thing that goes in, you know, a little... A festive display basically it's just these kind of twig or like log looking pieces that if you're in a diorama this kind of looks like you know your your chopped logs or firewood and then you've got kind of like you know your again chopped logs like it's uh, uh, had a tree chopped down um, and you can use this in all sorts of ways just to make the you know the terrain a little bit more diverse or something for a character to sit on or stand on or something you know just something like that and again um, these were really cheap because it's just cut up pieces of wood but 
even you know even if you just went and find um, you went and found a you know a log or a branch yourself and sawed it up you get the same effect so little things like this can really help make your uh, your diorama or display look a little bit more interesting then of course dirt if you for example go to a garden center and get a bag of soil um, that's mixed um, you know if it's got uh, peat in it or other things like that or you can just get straight you know soil or you can go like I say um, do it responsibly though go to the woods and sort of you know get a little bit of this this is good for studio sh shoots because obviously you can do this sort of stuff on location outside but just having a little bit of dirt um, you know is uh, is a good way to just spread that on the tabletop and you know get your camera at an angle where you can see that the terrain is mud but you don't have to you know kind of cover your entire room in it so nice and easy uh, in a little ziplock bag and uh, that's good to go so also what i've uh, got here and this is kind of like a repurpose but it's arguably something that you can kind of find you know in 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 the in the wild if you will um, yourselves but what 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 this is is basically a tree stump but the reason it's kind of scaled so well and looks so cool in terms of you know it looks like it's kind of like a dagger bar tree stump or something like that um, is because this actually is the tree stump to my Christmas tree this year we couldn't save it unfortunately so I thought how can I you know keep him alive somehow uh, his his memory if you will his spirit so basically I was like right I'm gonna chop the bottom off clean that up um, you know because obviously it was covered in, in dirt and then that is a nice little kind of piece that you can have like we've got here is like a tree stump um, or you know with all the exposed roots kind of like the Dagobah uh, looking trees that sort of thing or you know if you could have if you imagine this sitting in this kind of terrain and the child sitting on uh, uh, on top of the little stump there but as you can see nice again cheap and easy you can find this in in the woods this sort of thing um, or you know you can repurpose you know a dying tree or plant or something like that um, so again nice and nice and simple nice and easy to do um, again I really like these dioramas where money isn't really the, the big you know the big if because if you can do this and be creative on a budget then you know you're being versatile because you can create anything on this budget so that when the budget gets bigger and, and the capabilities get you know better you're able to just increase your craft and, and your ability to you know to excel at what you do um, you know you're not always going to have flashy camera equipment and a flashy studio and nice props and all that sort of thing so to try and be inventive where you can really does actually help you down the line as you start to actually upgrade your kit anyway and really you know hone in on what it is you want to do um, for example this is you know this next thing that I'm going to talk about is one of the kind of key things here um, and again it's really cost effective um, and uh, it's very versatile so what we've got here and you can kind of see all around I've, I've got them all around just kind of for the display purposes these are just fake um, kind of plants fake foliage so you know although we've got different designs of kind of ferns and grasses you know that is all fake so a couple of good points about that so obviously it's not going to die so you don't have to actually keep a plant alive it doesn't need a pot or anything um, and obviously this means that I can stick this into uh, something to have like some backing I can have it sticking out from the side from above you know for a, for a shot or for a display it's very versatile it's you know it's movable you can pack it away um, you know if you pack all of this away and it's nice and tight it's not going to really break um, again really really versatile so you've got couple of grasses here and again like I say they're very cheap they're the kind of things that you would have for like fake plants in a house or you know aquariums that sort of thing and you can pick them up like really cheap on eBay like you know for f and normally actually for a lot of these when you buy a multi deal so you buy lots of them you get a really good discount so when you're trying to sort of put together a kit and you think right you know I buy five get them for the price of three well why don't I buy quite a few ferns and grasses and then you know I'll be set my studio shots will always get, be complete I've always got you know these ferns and these grasses to kind of use as as practical pop, uh, 
props rather and what I really like about them is not only do they kind of actually give you some you know three-dimensional texture in the shot in terms of it's not just a picture um, behind you know your uh, your figure for your toy photography um, these give it those three dimensions that look you know they look realistic they look real but also you can interact so you could have you know like peeking through the, the long grass you could have um, you know crosshair with his rifle or Mando in his rifle that sort of thing so that's really useful <clears throat> again moving on with the same sort of stuff is like these kind of fake uh, like bonsai trees again for the scale that you're using and for what you're actually trying to achieve with displays and uh, your toy photography like these are fantastic like this was like five pounds um, and again like it's not going to die so <laughs> I do actually collect a couple well not collect but I have a couple of bonsai trees that um, I uh, try to keep alive um, and I can tell you that not only is this really good because you don't have the big pot that you need to kind of accommodate height wise into the shot but this doesn't <laughs> this doesn't uh, try to kill itself as much um, so definitely something that I would consider picking up just like these the fake foliage really good um, really good pickup um, and that's the same for uh, these pieces of foliage again you can just buy all sorts of different um, designs um, they're all the same it's more the fact that you can just have kind of like a different species look um, so you can kind of buy from one manufacturer and pick all sorts of ones um, and get them in that multi deal this again um, you can kind of see from the bottom of these weights um, these are meant for like aquariums but again like this is really good like long vine kind of looking foliage this could be used you know kind of like I had here you could use it in uh, a shot for like the leaves of a tree the branches of a tree you could have it as kind of vines coming out wrapping around something you could have it as just bushes or you know ha hanging down from from you know above the shot that sort of thing again really versatile really cheap um, and you know versatile in the fact that you can use them in all sorts of ways but also versatile in the fact that you can use them again and again forever they're not going to die you know that sort of thing you don't need to water them um, so that's really good and you know with this sort of stuff if you wanted to you can customize it as well you know you can do all sorts of things to it again with these little kind of like aquarium ones and these is more sort of the kind of plants that although they are kind of based on real kind of rainforest looking plants these are the kind of plants that I you know I saw and I thought these kind of remind me of kind of Star Wars um, esque you know kind of planets and their foliage like you know if you imagine you're watching the Clone Wars um, and you're you're on a planet like this and I like this because they've integrated these rocks as the weights but also these rocks are quite kind of you know realistic looking where you can integrate them into the scene um, which is really nice so you've got a couple of those I do suggest getting a plethora of these things and then you know you can interchange them and use them in all sorts of ways again like these um, just little bits of foliage these were like a 10 pack for like four pounds like unbelievably cheap but very versatile like you know like you can see again you, you can have them being interacted with or just as backing or you know foreground kind of props um, and it's really it's really easy and once you've got them you don't need to replace them once you've got a good plethora like this you know you've you've got a lot to work with and you can kind of see I've dotted them all around the scene just to make it look a bit fuller so you can do all sorts of things with them you don't have to use them all in the same way every single time and like these um, these little kind of stone weights that help them weigh down in aquarium tanks you can take them off they're just hot glued um, so I got a couple that I did take off so that I can wedge them into places but as I say really simple again this is the kind of thing where you're going to have a weight on the bottom it's for an aquarium but this is like just you know kind of like a bush or something like that that again can be used and that's the great thing is you're not paying you know unbelievable prices for diorama props you're paying for like aquarium accessories which are you know mostly plastic or um, you know some type of material like that uh, and then you're repurposing them so obviously you're kind of you know you're beating the market you're cutting the corners um, to your advantage what I've got a couple of 
um, because what I wanted to do really was concentrate on the more kind of forest planet look of the greens and the natural looking foliage and not so much kind of like aquarium um, kind of flowers and plants like this as much because I wanted to base it more in the greens and the browns and the kind of yellowy tones so that I can really use it as really transferable but I did get a couple of these so that I can kind of do those really you know really kind of Star Wars-esque planets you know if you picture kind of like in the Clone Wars when Order 66 kind of uh, you know was underway and uh, that scene uh, with the clones on that planet where all of the kind of trees and stuff are like all these really vibrant colours um, and stuff like that. That's the kind of thing I was thinking there. And again, you've got all of these brilliant accessories and trees and bushes and shrubs and all sorts of things, you know, all of this stuff. And when you kind of like integrate this in here and there, that can really, again, add to it. But I would suggest sticking with a bigger kind of collection of the greens and the more um, foresty planets, um, kind of foliage, you know, foliage, but, you know, having a little bit of kind of odd looking colourful ones to kind of make make your your diorama piece a little bit more um you know versatile but obviously for the most part for example if we're doing you know the you know we're doing endor we're doing the forest moon you can use all these kind of like the grasses and the moss and the trees and the foliage and you know the bushes that sort of stuff and that works really well and then you can kind of interchange them to make other dirt or forest planets um, and then with just these you know colorful ones these can really help you kind of change your shots um, in the sense that for example if you do lots of shots with the same type of greens and you don't really interchange which goes where then obviously it can become quite you know ordinary and quite repetitive so just having a little bit of different shape or different positioning or color can really set it apart from you know the shot that you've done before for example this is basically a it's kind of like a, a amphibian or tortoise kind of like water bowl and what I wanted to do here it kind of looks like it's obviously like a big kind of like open tree stump with moss and stuff like that. obviously that's fake moss that sort of stuff I wanted to get something like that so that I could have something I could fill slightly with water if I wanted to do any kind of water interaction like with maybe with um, you know Grogu or something like that um, so that again, very cheap, um, and it's just cast. So you can kind of see that it's just kind of like this molded shape. So it's very rugged, but again, very transferable. And hey, if you uh, ever decide to get a reptile or an amphibian, then you're already ahead. <laughs> and then what we've got here is quite a low budget kind of solution to trees. So basically what these tubes are, are like if you can imagine like what tennis balls come in or shuttle, uh, shuttlecocks or something like that. It's kind of cardboard tubing, you know, your, your Pringle can type tubing um, wrapped in newspaper and, and PVA glue to kind of give it some bits of texture, um, painted brown and then put on these um, coffee um, mug uh, disposable coffee mug tops to kind of make it easier to stand because make it makes the base wider and then real just live moss that was collected from the forest just hot glued on there to make the base a little bit more interesting obviously coming up from the grass um, and then on top of that obviously as well like it hides hides the uh, stand so just a couple of those not very you know not very uh, difficult to make but very effective last but not least the thing that I would highly recommend obviously this stuff you can you know you can do what you will with this information and you can kind of take your own spin on a lot of the ideas I kind of talk about and that sort of thing but this kind of fake grass astroturf this is great to pick around you know pick up around Easter time because a lot of displays and craft stores have it uh, very cheap but arguably you can pick it up cheap if you look in the right places but like this is really good because it just gives you nice um, you know base plates again you could use this for a display um, or you could use this for you know your toy photography shots like I do and I got a meter of this chopped it in half and then obviously it doubles up to go further back to make a big square but um, I got two of them so that I can do a wide shot if I need to but again like I say I would really recommend picking up some kind of like astro turf um, and definitely uh, 
try and pick up some of the kind of fake plants and foliage and uh, like aquarium accessories I definitely think that they're uh, a big um, a big thing you should try and pick up uh, little fake bonsai trees that sort of thing again a really good um, a really good pickup a steal really for the price that you get them from and, and you know f or get get them for and what you're going to use them for um, you know if you were trying to buy this sort of stuff uh, in terms of from a toy manufacturer for this you know this kind of thing you'd be paying way more than you're going to pay for this sort of stuff so i definitely recommend picking this kind of stuff up um, obviously as well try and be um, you know try and be smart and repurpose recycle um, you know use your ingenuity and find things and and see what you can do with them but yeah so uh, this is kind of like my basic um, kind of forest planet dirt planet um, diorama uh, kit I definitely think that um, it's worth uh, picking up a lot of this stuff and I'll throw some links down below um, as to kind of like places you can look for this sort of stuff um, but yeah it's definitely definitely a well recommended thing um, and uh, yeah I'm looking forward to showing off some shots in the future because um, obviously I'm I'm doing this from a toy photography standpoint um, but equally as I say all the time guys I mean you know you put your own spin on this and you can use this stuff to you know create amazing just spectacular displays for any you know any themed um, you know uh, display whether it's Star Wars Predator you know whatever um, you know Marvel anything just go for you know what you want to do be creative and don't hold back um, yeah so definitely uh, check those things out in the link below but that's going to do it guys i hope you've enjoyed this video do leave a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you're new here uh, it would really help the channel out there's plenty more to come so stay tuned and uh, take care guys i'm going to see you in the next one